but I'm really excited uh, today because we've got a really interesting, very broad subject of mobile and, and as normal, we've managed to kind of pull together some pretty seminal um, speakers on the panel. If any of you haven't been to an Albion Society before, what we try and do is bring together kind of seminal entrepreneurs who are kind of uh, making something happen in society. Um, and we just give them um, 10 minutes to tell us something interesting and hopefully we'll all get something out of it. So we've got uh, Simon Andrews, the man who looks like he's from advertising uh, in, the, in the glasses. Uh, he looks like he's from advertising because, gee, isn't he? Um, I first came across him, I don't know, back in the mid-90s. He started some of the seminal interactive agencies of that era. Um, he's done big strategic jobs in pretty much any of the best agencies in town. Um, we worked together briefly on the Labour Party when he was at Mindshare, when he was, I think, something called Chief Strategy Officer for the whole of the world or something like that. Anyway, he is an entrepreneur by a uh, person and he started his own business. He's now himself and a small team around him uh, running a great mobile consultancy called Addictive. They do more than that and I'm sure he'll tell you more about that when he has his session. You've come out half past eight on the morning to hear because obviously you, you recognise mobile's a pretty important thing. I'm going to try and convince you mobile is the only game in town and hope the next 10 minutes the facts I can show you will convince you it's a thing taken really seriously. So talk about the four P's of marketing. The way we look at the ecology is it's about devices first of all. It's about devices because what the devices do enable everything. It's about place with location, it's about people, we integrate with Facebook, it's about the physical with barcodes, and it's about um, promotions. You can use all that to drive discounts. We'll use that framework to try and just put some structures, things I'm going to talk about. One thing, looking back, Jason kindly said, you know, been in this business a long time. We think that mobile is going to go the same sort of way that online did, hopefully a bit quicker. But the first five years of online was, you know what, we need to build a website. 2000, 2005, no one comes to our website, should we tell people about it? When search took off, mobile advertising, when people finally put the URL on the end of the commercial. And then the last five years, online's been taken away from the geeks and the IT people, and it's gone into the centre of a business, it's looked at strategically. We think the same thing will happen with mobile over a shorter period. But what's really interesting, it's 11 years, almost to the day, since the height of the dot-com boom. When First Tuesday was happening, when IPOs were happening, it, colossal valuations. The number of people online then in the world was 350 million people. The whole dot-com boom was built on 350 million people, all on the 56K modem if they're lucky, or 28.8. And what's interesting about mobile, last year we passed that figure for people on mobile with smartphones already. So there are more people now on the mobile web with much better connections and all that learning about what mobile can do than we're on the web at the height of the dot-com boom. So this is big already. It's not a case of one day it's going to be colossal. It's big already. And you can't talk about mobile without a Mary Meek and Morgan Stanley chart. It's the law. Um, they don't do good charts. But what's interesting, their theory is each computing cycle is 10 times bigger than the last in terms of devices. So there are 10 times more mini computers and mainframes, etc. But they talk about mobile and look at the range of devices. So yeah, it's cell phones but it's MP3s, it's tablets, it's Kindles, it's wireless home devices. That fridge that knows when you're, it's out of food and will ring up Tesco is a mobile device. So those devices are all part of this ecology we're looking at. And if you look at the iPhone changed everything, but not really. When the iPhone was launched, it didn't make any difference to mobile. This is Google um, searches um, on mobile as a surrogate for growth of advertising. iPhone didn't make a difference. 3G iPhone did. It's the broadband speed that drives the changes from there. And that huge ramp is driven by you know, Android, BlackBerry, 3GS, etc. As the phones get faster, more people use this stuff. So devices are very important. And what's really important, in the last quarter of last year, for the first time, the industry sold more smartphones than PCs. PC sales are diving. This is some Google data. 15% of all searches in the US on Google are mobile. 99% of all mobile searches are Google in the States. It's a huge share. So 15% are all mobile. Look at this shape. You know, restaurants, autos, consumer electronics, very wide range. And a quote from someone at Google, mobile users are more prone to take immediate action. People searching on mobile higher intent, the time between intent action has been narrowed. So search, that thing that's changed our business so much, is moving mobile very quickly. But only 3% of mobile searches are monetized. Most brands 
don't have a website that, that really works on smartphones. So when people search for it, it doesn't really work. It's one of the bits of friction. But that whole place is, 40% you know, of mobile searches have a location or local intent or influence. Because you know, the phone knows where you are. If I'm walking around Spitalfields looking for someone to have a coffee, it tells me places where I am. It solves a problem for people. Facebook, 200 million mobile users, talk of reaching billions. They're pushing out different ways of actually accessing Facebook. So on a smartphone, you can do it. On a feature phone, you can do it. You can do it by SMS in some ways as well. This is some figures from Bain, talking about in Europe, this year, mobile has $110 billion worth of sales. Already Amazon do a billion dollars of sales. Marks and Spencer sell a million pounds a day, I think. 12% um, of Acada orders come from their apps. But the mobile influence on sales, $110 billion. And what people are doing is all this sort of stuff. You're in there you know, using the mobile phone to actually um, uh, take, send a photograph of a product, search for information on the product, request a coupon, scanning barcodes. If you go to John Lewis, there's a whole bunch of people walking around very surreptitiously, scanning barcodes, checking prices, doing like the Dixon dad say, you ask the nice man to tell you all about it, and buying it on Amazon on the way out of the building. I don't know if you know this, another disruption, Square. One of the guys from Twitter has launched this business. Square is this little thing you can get for free. You plug it into an iPhone, you can take credit card payments. It does a million dollars a day already, three or four months after launch, signing up huge numbers of merchants. So everybody in the market in Spitalfields can now be credit, can take credit cards. So it disrupts the whole banking business. If you think about, you talk to people in retail, the prime... The, the, the example everyone wants to follow in retail is Apple. You go to an Apple store, it's a brand cathedral. It's fantastic. You go to worship the product, but it's very good at taking money off you. And what they've done, the big thing they've done, is take the tills out of the way. You know, there's no tills, there's no barrier between you and the people taking the money. And this allows everyone to do that. So another disruptive mobile device. <coughs> and then the whole promotions. You know, talk about Groupon, large portion of Groupon. But the idea, if you know where somebody is, They've got this device, you've got some context from what they've been doing, you can make them an offer, you can drive a transaction, you can give them some targeted discount. O2 are doing it with SMS, L'Oreal and um, Starbucks signed up. The Gap gave 25% of anyone who checked in with Foursquare. They're all mobile devices and really changing how commerce is driven. And uh, Jason talked about, I've been advertising a long time, the one part of advertising I've never worked in is sales promotion. It's always struck me as being a pretty dull part of the business. But actually, sales promotion is now really, really sexy. The idea that you can look at sales promotion techniques and with mobile, find ways of incentivizing someone who's walking through there to come in here and buy a cup of coffee is really powerful. And one final thing, um, I got into a little debate with Thinkbox on um, Meditel because I was saying that the TV had lost the war for attention that people don't pay attention anymore. <coughs> and the whole two-screen thing is really important. Look at this is American data, but a huge proportion of people are watching television and are advertising television with a device, mobile device in their hands and looking to use that to search for things. There's a great quote from um, Google. In the Super Bowl, um, cries run ad with Eminem, M Eminem in it, um, drove a huge spike in sales, um, sorry, in searches. PC search up 48%, mobile search up 200%. So these devices have been used you know, to interact with what we're doing on TV as well. So let's talk about friction. Why, if all that's true, why, is, why are we all still wondering about mobile? What's holding us back? Well, first thing is, if you remember, if you didn't do this business, a few years ago, everyone needs a viral because you know, they're cheap, they're quite cool, and they solve all known problems known to man. And of course, what we had last year was, you know, we need an iPhone app because they're cheap, they're quite cool, solve lots of problems. And really that tactical Fashionable approach doesn't really make an awful lot of sense. But three reasons I think hold us back. First, it's bloody complicated. If you do something on iPhone, you've got to do something on Android, you've got to do something on Symbian, you've got to do something on Blackberry, you've got to look at SMS as well. It's a complicated ecology. So it's very hard to work out what the things you should do and work out you know, time and effort needed to do all that. It keeps changing. Nokia and Microsoft together. You know, every time you look at this market, you think it's settled down, something else changes from there as well. It keeps on changing. But the final thing is, I think our industry advisors either don't get it. The advertising industry this year will spend more money on cinema advertising than will on mobile advertising. So yeah, it hasn't really been embraced, don't really get it. And lots of you know, advisors are factories who turn out a particular product. If you're an advertising agency, 
typically your factory is producing TV commercials, and anything like doing a bit on mobile, something on Facebook, is quite a diversion, really where you make your money. If you're a media agency, you make your money by ring, buying one spot in X Factor for £250,000, it's much easier than booking a mobile campaign. So we think that the area is underserved. I would say that, wouldn't I? But I do think this is a really important um, space. I'm going to jump past. People find the idea of the fixed phone absolutely bemusing. For most people, the internet is fastened to the wall in the hall as well. And the great thing about mobile, it takes the internet out of the home, out three or four hours in the evening, maybe out at lunchtime, it's in your pocket the whole time. So my final chat before Jason throws something, it's time to experiment. We think you should be spending money learning what works in mobile and what doesn't. In mobile search, in mobile sites, in apps, find <laughs> out what works and what doesn't work. So when this you know, tide really changes, you're prepared for it. Thank you. Okay.